Good afternoon. I'm here this afternoon with Councilman John St. Clair and our recently hired pandemic coordinator, Mike Ute. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Karen Snyder and I'm currently the Vice Chair of the Shoshone Business Council. Today, Councilman St. Clair will provide an update of the pending lawsuit against the Shoshone Business Council and Mike Ute will go over the COVID funds. On behalf of the Shoshone Business Council and the Shoshone Finance Department, we wish to extend our appreciation to Mr. Ute for taking this very complex, critical job and assisting the tribe in getting these funds moving. Before I turn it over to Mr. Ute and Councilman St. Clair, I have a couple of items that may uh, would be an update and of interest to our tribal membership. First, the tribe has set September 8th as a reopening for all tribal departments. The delay in reopening has been due to the great demand for plexiglass nationwide and we are finally able to get the remainder of those items installed within our tribal departments, hopefully this week or next week. All departments will reopen with requirements that visitors must have their temperature checked and wear a mask. Employees will be screened every day as they report to work and a checklist will be administered per the tribal health department guidelines. Remember, there is still a health order in place which limits indoor and outdoor gatherings and requires all residents of the Wind River Indian Reservation to wear a mask in public. The tribe has not established a reopening date for the Shoshone Rose Casino. There are a lot of variables <clears throat> in this process, but the largest issue is the lender for the casino loan. We have bent over backwards to stabilize the casino finances, but we have yet to see a forbearance agreement. And it is tough to move forward without any guarantees that we will see a profitable enterprise. The land buyback program is in full swing and most of the eligible offers have been made. And if you have any questions or, or concerns, I encourage you to set up an appointment with the BIA. They can go over the land offers, whatever your interest in that particular track of land is. And so you make an informed decision. They have established hours to meet with uh, tribal members, and so I would certainly contact the BIA. Also, just a reminder that September 30th is the last day to complete the 2020 census. It is important that all households are counted. Last, I will pro provide you a brief update of the finances of the Eastern Shoshone Tribe. At the beginning of the year and prior to COVID, the tribe had a $1.6 billion shortfall in our budget. This is the budget that we utilize to maintain our tribal services and our tribally funded departments. Our goal always has been to ma maintain the tribes per cap level for tribal members, but this has truly been a challenge. I want to remind you that during the month of August, we were able by using conservative measures that we were able to provide a school bonus for all of our tribal members. Um, and so that was actually taken care of. Overall, the per cap revenue has decreased by approximately 67% and the 15% account has been reduced by approximately 35%. We will continue to assess the overall finances as we simultaneously try to get the COVID funds authorized for appropriate expenses. So the last item I'll talk to before I hand it over to Mr. Yu is in regards to the overall COVID funds. So most of you probably already know this, is the CARES Act reserved $8 billion from the Coronavirus Relief Fund for payments to tribal governments. And while there were many different models and proposals as to how these funds should distribute the, be distributed to the tribes, um, we finally ended up addressing our congressional delegations in order for our voices to be heard. So after many go-rounds in Congress, the formula was finally established and the Eastern Shoshone Tribe, we initially requested $90 million from the COVID funds. Um, needless to say, that is not what we were awarded. There were a lot of models the Treasury took into account as to how the $8 billion should be distributed. And as it sits right now, the funds have to be expended by December 31st, 2020. And we are hopeful that the HEROES or the HEALS Act will pass in Congress, which extends the date to spend the COVID funding until December, I'm sorry, till September 31st, 2021. I have to commend the Eastern Shoshone Housing Authority and Tribal Health. They have both secured separate allocations of, fund, of COVID funds and must be percent, per, per, I'm sorry, spent pursuant to those specific guidelines. 
So that concludes my part, and I would like to turn this over to Mike Ute now for the overall COVID update. Hui -hu. Thank you. My name is Mike Yu, and I am the Eastern Shoshone COVID-19 Funds Coordinator. And I like to emphasize funds because I am not in charge of anything that has to do with medical. I'm only in charge of the budgeting process and being able to get these funds used. Right off the bat, I want to say I have been on this job for less than a week, and what I've seen is that for every person that has an idea for how these funds are spent, there's always somebody else out there that has the exact opposite idea. So in the last week, I've had about 30 people in my ear telling me how I should spend these funds. So some people only want the elders to have access to the funds. Some people only want children to have access to the funds. Some people only want the employed and then the unemployed. So there is no, ha there is no way to spend these funds and to budget these funds and satisfy everybody. There's just no way. So what we did was I, I've been working and trying to find a happy medium and then trying to utilize most of the funds so that our seniors are most taken care of. And the reasoning for this is because our seniors are adversely ref affected by the pandemic. Children are less affected by the pandemic health-wise. So if a senior comes down with the pandemic, they are most at risk for, for um, death. They are most at risk for serious uh, adverse effects. So this, this was the reasoning for pouring more of the money in towards senior services. So we were awarded all together, we were awarded $12,442,229.05. That was over two allocations. One was from the first allocation that we got from the federal government, and then the second was a smaller one that was kind of like left over, if you want to think of it that way. So far, we have only used the funding on two allocations. One would be the $800 per member, if you remember that correctly, over 4,433 people. That equates to $3,546,400. That was the very first $800 check. We are in the process of uh, sending out a second payment, which is $600 to only 18 and above. Now, I know we got a lot of blowback about that, but again, let's try to think of it as the adults are taking care of the children with this money, okay? Uh, that one came out to $1,702,800. So if you add both of those together, we get $5,264,200. This is 42% of all of the funds that we have received. So we have already gone, gone through about 50% of the funds that we were given for the CARES funding. So think of it that way, 50% is already gone. What we're trying to do is we're trying to strengthen not only our community, we're trying to strengthen our, our services that our community has provided. So, uh, I want you to really ask yourself one question, and that's, do you strengthen and build a healthier community by giving each individual member a large amount of money? Or do you build a healthier community by strengthening those programs that give that community services? So this is the reasoning behind how we uh, allocated and budgeted some of the money, and I'll go through that, and you will be provided with a breakdown of exactly how, how much money we gave to each program and how it's going to be spent. The, the figures do not take into account how much has been spent already because we just haven't spent it yet. Like I said, we only used it two ways. So if we want to go down each line item, we have welfare assistance, and that was the $800 per tribal member. That's $3,546,400. We are going to get generators for the Rocky Mountain Hall and the Big Wind Hall. That's just to make sure that if power outages go out, that they're taken care of. That's $500,000 that goes towards that. 
Weatherization for elder homes, now this is a big one. 300 senior homes at 5,500 per unit. Now that's going to be 62 and over and, and Alicia at the um, Elder Assistance Program, she will be taking care of those applications when those are ready. That e equals $1,650,000. Equipment and materials, Shoshone Roads Program, that we allocated $500,000. That is mostly towards uh, antiquated equipment, equipment that doesn't, doesn't work anymore. And my reasoning for looking at some of these individual programs is if we can strengthen these programs by giving them newer or equipment that they can actually use, we're putting it back on the, on the programs to say, now there's no excuses. Now you, can, now you have the, the equipment, now you can get it done. So 500,000 went to Shoshone Roads. Subsidized funding for the solid waste program. And we all know that the solid waste program, the trash dump, that's, that, that needs some work. So this money was to stabilize that program. 300,000 will go to the solid waste program. We have a wood cutting operation that operates through TANF. They are, un, they are not utilizing some of their equipment that they have. We could strengthen that program and also turning into a training program in the future. So that is uh, 350,000 we allocated to that. Utility stabilization program, and again, this will go towards seniors, and again, we're gonna be allocating a lot towards the seniors. 300 seniors will be getting $250 per month for six months. That's $450,000. And I believe, uh, if I'm correct, that'll be used as a credit towards um, any kind of providers that they're using. We're not gonna be giving out checks. I think we're gonna be giving credits out instead of handing money out. Purchase new vehicles for food delivery services and healthcare. This again will be uh, tied into Alicia's program. It'll also be tied into any other program that needs a transport vehicle. 35,000 for five vehicles, 175,000 total for that. Uh, we already talked it over with uh, the elder assistance program. They will be getting a new work truck, which they desperately need. They also need a uh, food delivery vehicle and a transport vehicle because we can't they currently cannot transport seniors sitting right next to each other. So they need a vehicle big enough so that they can uh, get the social distancing and without having to transport a singular senior every single time. Purchasing power poles, five poles at 10,000 a piece. Those are, are quite expensive, uh, especially if you're moving into a new home, you will probably have to cover that on your own. 50,000 for that. Hazard pay for employees. 200,000. The housing rehab and deep cleaning, this will mostly go towards um, the, the Eastern Shoshone housing and they'll make use of it however they feel they need to use. 30 homes at $1,200 a piece, that's $36,000. Tribal government operations, this is a big figure here, that's at $2,500,000. The way that's reasoned is that a lot of the employees are getting less hours, a lot of the employees are having to do things uh, pandemic related and they are not getting paid for it. So uh, they'll talk about it a little later about the financial status of the tribe. We believe that we can use these funds to cover some of what, what we're doing for the employees. Uh, that's gonna desperate, desperately be needed and you'll see that as we're, we'll talk about it a little bit, a little bit more. We'll go into depth on it a little bit more. We're gonna purchase a trailer specifically for COVID testing. Now this is gonna be uh, quite useful. So no, you will no longer have to go to make, make an appointment anywhere. You can just go to this trailer and you can utilize their testing uh, facility there. There's 10,000 set aside for that. Education resiliency, which is uh, higher education. We're going 60 laptops at $1,500 $1, a piece. That comes out to $90,000. Here's what we're looking at on that is if, say we don't, say we get laptops that don't cost $1,500, that I think what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to kind of recycle the money back through that same program. So if there are people out there that do not need laptops, maybe they need a printer, maybe they need something else for their schooling, and this is aimed towards the, the, the collegiate student, they'll be able to afford that. Maybe they can put that in. So that particular program, we'll be able to allocate that money and have applications for certain things once we get that system fully set up. And that goes for all of these programs. What I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna be in charge of 
having applications for all of these programs. I'm putting it back on the programs that are giving these services out, so you will have to, to talk to the program, get the application filled out through that specific program, and then just all roads lead through me. Um, I'm going to be uh, not particularly too strict, but um, if I feel like something does need to be approved and there's a justification for that spending, I won't see any problem um, approving certain things. Now that's not going to be for everybody, but I will look at it case by case and see if we can get things moving forward. So we have the refrigeration units and storage. That's $110,000 and that is mostly going to be used for, I think, tribal health needs uh, a cold storage area because for now they're using the facilities at the commodity building. And that becomes a problem once you can't get into those facilities to get those things you need. So we need to have their own uh, specific place that they can use and they can have access to any time of the day or night. Uh, volunteer fire department. Uh, they're gonna be using $150,000. Um, that's desperately needed. They need that to pump back into that program to stabilize it again. Internet connectivity. $122,029.05. That's a little bit of an odd number, but that had to be uh, balanced out because of the budget. What that could be used for is, and what I am looking at and what I'm trying to currently set up, and hopefully I'll get that done by the end of the week, is being able to uh, provide uh, families with, with internet connect connections or um, being able to pay for internet for families that have students. There are a lot of students out there falling through the gaps that aren't able to get covered uh, through their internet provider, or do we have some cases where there's two parents that don't live in the same household, but the, the child is enrolled Shoshone, and one of the parents um, is able to, to take advantage of, of uh, the school's policy on being able to pay for internet, while the other parent is left out. So this kind of money would be able to reimburse and help that, that other parent out. And there's, there's going to be a plenty of other things like that. But I will be, again, I'll be taking that case by case to see if funds can be approved for that. And lastly was the, the food security, which was the $600 for 2,837 members, I think. Um, but that, that's only 18 and over. So that's why that number is smaller than the initial number of 4,433. There are, you know, obviously about almost half that are 18 and under. Um, that number did go up just a little bit. I think it went up by about 30 since we're using the date of September 1st. That comes out to $1,702,800. And again, it's just a little bit more, but we're, we're, we're coming in right at there. So that, that's the total award of $12,442,229.05. I'll be handling this. Uh, I'm taking on the responsibility of, of how we're spending this. I'm taking on the responsibility of how we're not spending it. I'm going to be telling people no. So, uh, and I'm prepared for that. It's, it's just something that we got to do. Don't take it out on the wrong people. Don't take, especially don't take it out on the programs that are going to be participating in this. If there's anything wrong with it, I'm taking on that responsibility. Um, and I just thank you for your patience. And it's an evolving process. And as we go along, things will get better. Things will get easier. Uh, I just want to remind people, we did get a lot of money. But once you start factoring in, there's thousands of people that this has to go to. That money goes really fast. The other thing is, I, I've heard people say, well, this should go through general counsel. I want to remind you, I had 30 people talking into my ear that had different ideas. I want you to think of 150 people trying to come up with a solution. It just won't happen. So I'm willing to delegate myself to be able to uh, figure that out for you. And if I can find a happy meeting medium, that's what I'm going to do. And that's my goal. I'm accountable. I want to be accountable. I want to be efficient. And I want to be able to use these funds as fast as possible so people can get those services. Thank you.